Hello. Today I want to demonstrate the capabilities of the WebLogic Kubernetes Toolkit UI. The UI is a user interface that facilitates the entire lifecycle of the WebLogic domain with the WebLogic Kubernetes operator or with Verrazano. The Toolkit UI leverages the tools from the toolkit, such as the operator, the WebLogic image tool, the WebLogic deploy tool, and the WebLogic remote console. The WKT UI uses these tools from the toolkit. It will introspect the domain that might be running locally or remotely on a virtual machine or physical machine. The result of that introspection is a WDT domain model, which is a metadata representation of the domain configuration an application archive that contains the application binaries, and a WDT variable files where you can define a values for placeholders inside of the domain model. The UI allows you to edit this WDT model using well-known and familiar remote console pages. The next step is to create the WebLogic images, whether it is the WebLogic primary image that contains the WebLogic binaries, or the application image that contains the model, the application archive, and the variables, which were the result of the introspection. If the intention is to run with a WebLogic Kubernetes operator, the UI will facilitate the deployment of the WebLogic operator, provision the domain, provide the opportunity to define how you want to run the domain. For example, how many replicas to run inside of the WebLogic cluster. And then if the intention is to run with the WebLogic Kubernetes operator, the UI will optionally allow you to deploy an ingress controller and create the ingress routes that will indicate how traffic will be load balanced across the different WebLogic servers. We have added enhancements to the latest version of the Toolkit UI. These enhancements allow us now to do introspection of domains that are located in a remote machine from the Toolkit UI. We have integrated with remote console pages to edit and update WDT model. And it allows you to set affinity and anti-affinity rules to specify where you want the WebLogic server pods to run in the Kubernetes cluster. This version of the UI supports both Operator 4.0 and the latest Operator 3.4. The Toolkit UI also allows you to deploy WebLogic domains to Verizon. You can see in the left navigation, it will navigate through the whole process of uh, setting project settings and then uh, doing introspection and editing a model and preparing the model, then creating the WebLogic images. And then in Kubernetes section, it will take you through checking to see that you have the settings to connect to your Kubernetes cluster and your Cube cuddle information, deploy the operator, deploy the domain, and then optionally deploy the ingress controllers and the roles. So the first spot is the project settings. In the project settings, you set the settings that are common to all, to any of these actions. You say how you want to save your credentials. It can be in the OS, in the project file, or not stored at all. It allows you to select what kind of domain home pattern you want to follow, model and image, domain home and image, or domain home on persistent volume. What is the target? Do you want to deploy in Verrazano, the WebLogic domain in Verrazano, or do you want to deploy it with the operator? And then your JDK, as well as your Oracle home, what kind of, what is the engine that you're going to use to build your image? Is that Docker or Podman? The next step is to do an introspection of your domain. I am going to introspect a domain that I have locally here on my Mac. So I select my domain home and I say, okay. So under the covers, the UI is invoking the WebLogic deploy tooling discover, which is doing an introspection. 
of my WebLogic 12214 domain in offline mode. Here we are, so we completed the introspection. The result of that introspection is gonna be a metadata representation of that configuration, which we call WDT model. The variables that have placeholder values for any placeholder inside of this model and the archive. The archive simply contains the application binaries, whether that be a war or a near, and you can add to it any file. It could be a, a wallet, a class by library, a custom file that you need for your application deployment. Let's, let's traverse this really quick. So we have uh, a WebLogic domain, 12214, a node manager, a cluster. It's a dynamic cluster. So you have your server template. And then you have application, my war is deployed to cluster one. The UI offers integration with a remote console where you can edit that model in well-known and familiar remote console pages. So I can do things like add a data source. Let me create a data source new. Let me call it ideas. Target it to cluster one. Let's do a generic data source just because it's simpler. My DB, my host, user, and my password. Okay, let's create this data source. Let me go to, this is a dummy data source, so I don't want it to connect to any database. So I'm gonna make initial capacity zero so I can deploy my domain without errors. Now, if we go to the code view, you will see that now I have a data source, right? A generic data source that I created in my remote console pages. Okay, so next is to validate that the mo model is valid. There you go. And then prepare the model to deploy with a WebLogic Kubernetes operator. Okay. The next step is to create the WebLogic images that we will need to deploy. I can, in the UI allows me to create a primary image, but I will use my image that is in the Oracle Container Registry. It's a WebLogic image, slim image, that contains all the security patches from the January CPU cycle. Let's create this auxiliary image. I already prepared my model, so I'm not going to prepare it again. I need to include the WebLogic deploy tool binary so that in model and image, the operator can use WDT to create the domain. So under the covers, the UI is invoking the WebLogic image tool to build the WebLogic auxiliary image. So now that the auxiliary image has been created, I am going to push that auxiliary image to OCIR, so this is a registry that I have in the Oracle Cloud. Okay, pushed. So now images have been created. The next is to look what is your Kubernetes cluster where you're gonna deploy your domain, your kube config, and uh, let's verify connectivity, make sure that I have everything set properly. The next step is to deploy the operator. By default, the UI is gonna deploy the latest version of the operator, but it supports operator 4.0 and 3.4. Uh, you tell it the namespace where the operator is gonna run. The label selector tells uh, the operator how it's gonna discover the domains that it needs to manage. And then if whether you wanna set role bindings, your Java logging level, if you want to say it, a node selector for the operator so that it runs in a specific node in your Kubernetes cluster. I already uh, deployed the operator, so I'm going to skip that step. 
In my WebLogic domain, I specify the namespace for my domain. I provide the WebLogic admin credentials. Those are going to be Kubernetes secrets UI will create for me. I specify the primary image, which is coming from the Oracle Container Registry. I already created my auxiliary image, so I don't have to, but if I need to, I can uh, go and it will take me to uh, where you create your auxiliary image. I have a cluster and I can edit and say how many replicas I wanted to start with. Remember, I have a dynamic cluster with a max of five managed servers. I want only two in running state. It allows me to change the, the variables and then I have to create a secret for my new data source that I added. So it was my password. And then it allows you to do advanced settings. Let me close the console. Things like I need to provide an encryption secret so that the operator, when it creates a domain, it encrypts it for security. And also it, it sets a node selector to indicate where those pods should run in a Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so my domain, let's deploy the domain. So under the covers, what's happening is that the UI is creating those Kubernetes secrets. It's creating the WebLogic domain custom resource that is going to tell the operator how you want to run that WebLogic domain. As soon as the operator sees that domain custom resource, it will then start the WebLogic pods according to desired state. The operator is doing things like creating services and secrets so that it doesn't matter where the WebLogic pods are scheduled, they can always communicate with each other. So let's, we can get the domain status to see what is the status, how it's running, if there have been any errors in the deployment. So the domain is deployed and some servers are up and running, but the domain has not reached the replica count goal. So you can see that, okay, there it goes. So the admin server is starting. You can see the pod starting. The container still, the container still hasn't started. As soon as the admin server is up, then it will start the managed servers. There it goes. So managed server one, managed server two. Pods are running. Admin server came to running state. That means we can already create the ingress rules that will dictate how. So the UI allows me to optionally deploy an ingress controller. I already did that. It's going to be traffic in my case. And then it allows me to set some ingress rules. I have reached my application and I can load balance it's one, two, one, two. Okay, now let's scale up the domain. So I go back to my domain and I can increase the number of replicas from two to three and deploy my domain again. Now we should see three managed servers running. So now I see a third managed server running. So if I go back to my application, I can load balance here and I should see automatically traffic to three, one, two, three. So the operator, when it saw that the replica count in the cluster went to three. It started a new pod um, managed server for managed server three running in it and adjusted the services so that traffic can transparently be adjusted uh, to the new server that has been added to the WebLogic cluster.
And that concludes my demo. Thank you very much.